What's up guys, welcome to Expedition Nan Part 3. Join us as we continue to explore the remote montane forests of extreme northern Thailand in search of some truly rare and elusive herpetofauna. This episode is packed with exciting species, including the biggest arboreal viper I've ever seen, my life for Himalayan mountain vipers, crazy crocodile salamanders, and a gumprecht pit viper who was in need of our help. Enjoy the video. All right, another snake, a species we've already seen, but this time an adult. I've actually seen a few more adults already off camera because my camera was packed away due to heavy rain. But yeah, here you have adult Piraeus geminatus. Beautiful. I just love how bright orange they are. They're much more somehow like elongated as well than the Birdmorai and Carinatus. Mm -hmm. And they're very twitch, like flaily. Come on, stay still so we can see. There we go. Okay. Time. Which way was it going this way, huh? Mm -hmm. Oh my god, this thing doesn't stay still. Alright, next snake is this beautiful, huge Pope's Pit Viper male. Have a look at that chunky head of his and that blood red eye. Let's just gently move this guy off the road. Come on, no biting. All right, he was going in this direction. Let's just gently assist him. All right, there you go, dude. All right, just got another large adult female Gumprecht Pit Viper, Tremorosaurus Gumprecti. I think she may possibly even be bigger than the last. And she's reacting a bit more than the last. Although I don't think that that was necessarily a defensive reaction, but rather she hadn't noticed I was there and something touching her may have caused her to think it could be prey. Um, but I'm sure that once she becomes aware that this is clearly not prey, she will probably be pretty easy going. Hmm, maybe not. I'm willing to test this theory and see if actually all Gumprecht's pit vipers are docile. Okay. Maybe not as docile as the last, but that's still good enough for me. What a beautiful snake. I just love the yellow eyes on these. Oh. Ooh. <laughs> all right, maybe they're not all as docile. She was about to take a bite out of me there, so I had to quickly readjust my position. All right, I'm gonna let her be. She's clearly not in the mood. Just got another green viper. By the looks of things, another female Gumprecht's pit viper. This one is tiny though, but she's just out of reach. I mean, I could get her down, but it'll be a lot of effort, and we've seen plenty of these, so I'm just gonna leave her up there. Alright guys, check this out. We just got another one of our targets. This is Tyus multisinctus, the many-banded green snake. And it's in the genus Tyus, so it's the same genus as all of the rat snakes, but the common name of this one is actually not rat snake. And I can kind of understand why, because when you look at it, it actually doesn't look as much like the rat snakes as all of the other members of the genus do. You can see it has that really short, actually very small head. It is non-venomous, of course, but it has these nice yellow specklings along the body, which are actually bands, which in smaller individuals are much more defined. And this is a adult, so the bands are a little bit reduced, but really cool snake. Not a very bitey species like most of the rat snakes are either. Um, but yeah, these are actually really neat. One of our targets, and 
I didn't think I would be so into these, but now that I see them in person, it's actually one of my favorite of our targets that we've found so far. It's just such a elegant looking snake, and they're very muscular as well, like he's kind of constricting my arm a little bit there right now. But look at that tiny pointed head. And he's actually really girthy, whereas most of the other Taya species are very long and slender snakes. I would actually say that this probably should not be in the genus Tyas, and it used to actually be a different genus, but then it got merged with Tyas, which personally I don't agree with, but it is what it is. But yeah, a very interesting and unique rat snake. Well, we've all already seen it, and we've actually all already taken photos before starting the video, so we're just gonna let this guy go. All right, so here we have a juvenile Elafe taniura, and there's a bit of debate about which exact subspecies this is. Harry is convinced it's Elafe taniura unanensis, but a lot of other people seem to say that the ones in this area are Macardi. So I don't actually know either. Um, I'm by no means an expert on rat snakes, or any snakes for that matter. Um, Either way though, it's one of the beauty rat snakes, same as the cave racers, which you've seen in our recent southern Thailand videos, but if you look at the body, the pattern is actually quite different, and there's no caves around here, but you can find these just in normal forests as well. And he is just going up this vertical, really tall tree. and. We're just going to let him cruise off, but I think one of the main differences are those diamond-shaped spots along the body which the cave racers don't have. Harry, which ones do you think are nicer? These are cave racers. Oh, these I prefer to cave racers. Yeah. Not my favorite of these subspecies. Um, the uh, blue beauties are probably my favorite. I like them all. Yeah, one, all snakes, one of the subspecies of these, the blue beauty rat snake, was actually my first snake I ever bought. Oh, look at that tail rattle going. Look at the way he's just scaling that tree. Oh yeah, check this out. Another one of our targets, a species we've already seen. But you may remember when we last saw the red bamboo racer, we said we would really like to see a juvenile because the juveniles have that really different pattern. And I just found one cruising in the leaf litter here on the side of the ditch. Wow, he's so much more vibrant as well. All right, let's get this guy before he... Oh, oh, he's bite. And the head, look at the head as well. Now that's a nice looking snake. Look at that head. So clean looking. And you can see how different the pattern in these juveniles is compared to the adult that we found the other night. Not as bitey either. The adult was actually quite well behaved as well. I feel like you've probably seen these in the hobby. They're quite popular. A lot of people keep them, although they are semi-fossorial and actually for that reason don't make very good pets at all but the beauty factor is definitely the reason why people keep them. And I think a lot of people don't realize that that's not a morph from captivity. Like, you can get corn snakes and stuff in literally all colors that you don't get them in the wild, but these actually are this beautiful in the wild in their normal morph. That is amazing. Probably my favorite non-venomous snake I've seen in a long time. And I guess it's time to release. This is really weird, but for some reason the, the shape of their head reminds me of like a lychee seed. I don't know if any of you guys can see that, but it's like so oval and long. Really neat. Alright, little dude. Back you go. Alright guys, this is one of our final nights, and for that we decided, because it's actually quite wind still today and warm, no rain, we're going to actually hike all the way to the peak of a mountain at almost 2,000 meters. 
Uh, it's going to be a long hike and we just had a long bumpy motorbike ride behind us. But yeah, I'm really excited. It's the first night that we're actually doing some proper trail hiking. So I hope we'll be able to find some stuff that we weren't able to find on the roads yet. The beginning part of this trail is quite disturbed forest. A lot of people graze their buffaloes up here during the day, but this gradually will get higher and higher. And the further up we get, the more pristine the habitat will be until we ultimately get to the peak of one of the highest mountains in the area. And I'm sure there's some rare stuff to be found. Alright guys, here is another one of my big venomous targets for the area. And this is a good opportunity for a game of Spot the Snake. He is visible right now but only just. You can try and pause the video, zoom in, do all that stuff, and let me know if you manage to spot it. It's one of the most well camouflaged and hard to detect snakes, although they're actually pretty common. Alright, here's the reveal. If you look in right under that leaf there, you can just see the tail sticking out. That little color, oh, he's moving. Alright, from this angle it wasn't actually very visible, but that little bright thing right in the middle there is the tip of his tail, which is actually lighter than the body. This is a tiny juvenile mountain pit viper, Avophis monticola. And let's see if we can lift these little leaves. There he is. Get a better look at him. Okay, his head is totally buried. Come here, little dude. Wow, this is actually a really vibrant one. He must have recently shed. Let's just very carefully lift little Sir out. All right, this is Avophis monticola, the mountain pit viper, which is a lifer for me, a species I've never seen before. And this is only just a tiny little hatchling, probably a bit bigger already than hatchling size, so he'd probably be a few months old. But this species does grow incredibly slowly, so maybe he's actually older than I'm thinking. But yeah, what a neat little snake. They are a pit viper and of course venomous, although at this size they are usually quite docile. Our adults, I've heard, can be quite snappy, but I don't think this guy is in any position to try anything crazy. Up in the mountains here it's actually quite cold so a lot of the snakes we're finding are relatively sluggish and when you first pick them up don't even take a lot of notice to you. Look at that incredibly broad head, much broader than for example a Malayan pit viper or something. Uh, almost from the head shape, almost kind of like a waggler's pit viper. Oh yeah, have a look at that, what a beautiful little snake. Very neat little dude. Have a look at that. He might even have a little meal in there as well. He's got a night hornet. Alright, Rupert just pointed out there's a night hornet buzzing around me. So we're, we're gonna... Also a uh, green viper here if you want to see. We're gonna let this little guy just... cruise on off. I'm gonna get a nice close-up of that head for you guys. Absolutely adorable. Where's the green viper? Not the kind of place you'd expect one to be in ambush. I've kind of disturbed it now, but... Oh yeah, I saw one in a similar position the other night. Here's a... It's Pope's. Female Pope's Pit Viper. But it's quite steep down there, and probably just gonna leave her be. Just got an adult Piraeus Geminatus. This one isn't nearly as orange as some of the other ones we've seen. Uh, come on, get out but just as wriggly. These, for some reason, never just crawl normally in your hands. Okay, now he's acting a bit more normally. You can see they've got those beautiful red eyes. I am one-handed though, so I can't zoom in very well right now. Anyway, put him back on here. Jip. All right, it's starting to get a bit windy, but the snakes are still out. In here we have a female Gumprex Pit Viper. Tumorosaurus gumprecti. It's smaller than the ones we've filmed so far. Very neat, just on the side of the trail here. Almost stepped on her actually. 
As we begun to gain elevation out of nowhere, it got insanely windy and foggy, which we thought would for sure put an end to our productivity. Luckily though, green vipers were still out in force, and a bit later on, the wind did die off again. All right, the next snake that emerged through the fog is this Piraeus geminatus. Just sleeping here in this insane wind. I'm not gonna disturb him, he seems like he's got a good resting spot there. Neat. All right, got a large adult Gumprex Pit Viper. The male, which is the first one we've filmed this trip. And the interesting thing is that the males, oh, oh never mind, he was about to bite me there. Uh, but the males do have red eyes. Sometimes. Sometimes. Well, all of the times we've seen so far. We got a yellow one yesterday. Did you? Uh, me and Rupert did, yeah. All right, got another Gumprex Pit Viper. This is possibly the biggest one we've filmed so far. I mean, she is beefy. I'm gonna put my thumb there so you can see the size of her head. I mean, that is a big viper, and they get even bigger than this. Wow. Look at us. I love when vipers get really large, how tiny their eyes remain in proportion to the head. What a nice snake. I wonder if she's gonna be friendly or not. Ooh. Hello, ma'am. Wow, that's a big head. I love how she's just clinging to this perfectly vertical tree. She's quite heavy too. She's got some she's got some weight to her. Ooh. Coming around taking interest in me there. <laughs> Alright, I'll leave you. Beautiful snake. <laughs> Alright, we've got a new altitude record. We're pretty much at the top of the mountain soon, and we just found this little Piraeus geminatus at around 1,940 meters elevation. Pretty cool. Let's see if we can top it and find a snake even higher than this snake. This snake is so high. All right, we've arrived at the peak. There's a nice plateau here. And actually, there's surprisingly little wind considering how much wind we had on our way up. Nothing. If you look up, it's literally like completely wind still. And not raining, but everything is wet. These are prime conditions for snake activity, so let's get it. Currently fighting our way through some really dense vegetation on a very steep slope. Ooh. Almost fell over. We did lose the trail, or there is no trail. So we're just going through here, hoping that we'll get to a slightly more open, cleared up area where we can actually do some productive searching. <laughs> Check this thing out, guys. Rupert just found this leaf bug. I'm not exactly sure which species this is, but it's absolutely massive. And every part of its body looks exactly like a leaf. Look, it has these wings that fold up. They look like leaves, and underneath it still looks like leaves. It's literally just like a bug made of leaves, and when you pick them up, they don't move a lot. They kind of just act like a leaf, too. Very neat little bug. All right, guys, check this out. This is the most excited I've ever been for a non-snake, I'm pretty sure. This is a species of Tylotrotodon, one of the endemic creatures of this area. And this one in particular is endemic to this specific area that we're in right now. This is one of the crocodile salamanders. And have a look how cool it is. The head looks pretty much like a toad, and then it just has that really warty line going down either side of the body. What an incredible little creature. Look at that face, and he's so slow moving as well. That is really, really neat. Very cute too. All right. Back you go, little dude. 
Oh, oh, sorry. Look at his little eyes too. He has got like the cutest little round pupils. Dude, this one's got a f***ed up face and something in its mouth. I what? Don't know what. This one's got a f***ed up face or something in its mouth. Ugh. Bring that boss over here. Rupert just found another Gumprecht's pit viper, and he says, quote, it has a really f***ed up face. <laughs> Can you give me a hook. Look at that. Is it a snail inside its mouth? That does not look good. What on earth? Get that thing down, I want to have a closer look. All right, Val. We should get it behind the nest and see if we can... Yeah, I want to have a closer look if it's something that's like stuck there that we can perhaps yeah. pull out. Or if it's some kind of like abscess. Ooh, Harry's favorite. What? <laughs> you like abscess, don't you? <laughs> what? <laughs> Wait, this thing is freaking out. Can you put the hook on it? <laughs> You're gonna have to, it's not gonna stay. Let's see if we can have a look at what on earth is going on with this thing's head. And we're getting swarmed by some kind of unpleasantry. That does not look appetizing. Appetizing? Yeah, would you wanna eat that? I wanna be gentle not to hurt it as well, but. If you want to see what's going on here, come on, open your mouth. It's some kind of like secretion. No, wait, it's just some kind of gunk stuck in its mouth, I think. Let's see if we can get this out gently. Yeah. Without doing more harm than good, but realistically, I don't think it's possible to do more harm with this. Got, like, its mouth looks intact. I think it's just like, maybe it tried to swallow something that was not so kosher. <laughs> Other than this, it looks in good condition. It doesn't look too skinny either. Yeah, this must have happened recently, whatever it is. Do we have like a tweezer or something? No, a bit difficult to tweeze liquid. It's not liquid, it's, it's, not, not. it's like a gelatinous clump of something. Maybe it like tried to eat something that was like, I don't know. Is there any way you can like pinch that somehow? Yeah, there is. It's just really close to the fang and I don't want to necessarily get bit because that would be not good. It's attached to the fang. I think it's yeah. an infected fang, isn't it? No, I don't think so. Because mm. it, whatever it is, is going all the way down the throat as well. Is it? Yeah. It looks like it's attached to the fang. No, 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 it's not attached to the fang at all. Maybe the fang is like stabbed into it, that could be. But it's not actually... The fang. Are you making any progress? Yeah, yeah, it's coming. I just don't want whatever it is to rip. Coming, slowly but surely. This is depraved. <laughs> what the boss? <laughs> it doesn't smell good. <laughs> it's gonna be some sort of infection. Is it? This? Right. Is there any more? Wait. Performing surgery. Nope. No, look. Look down the mouth. Yeah, I'm going. Is there nothing? Nope, all looks clear now. It was literally just like a clump of something, and the fang looks intact, yeah. actually. Wait, there's a bit more stuck here that I'd like to try and get. Could it be that it, like, struck at a gecko or something that was sitting on some, like, chunk of, like, sap? Because geckos lick up, like, lap up, like, sap from trees. <laughs> that it just, like, struck into... That's not like... sap, though. <laughs> well, it could be sap, like, a couple days old. Or, like, it's something some, odd. Like, I don't know what it is, but it's well, something odd. Anyway, it <laughs> is looking a lot better now. Um, I don't know if what we did actually was any good, or... I, I, I feel like there's a very high chance that it, we didn't do something bad to it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I mean, the way it was, it was definitely <laughs> not going to be able to be, Yeah, we've definitely done um, it a favour. 
Isn't it funny how, how docile gump are though? Like... Yeah. I did find one the other night though that was really not docile. Maybe they're just cold. Did you just idea? <laughs> no, I didn't. <clears throat> anyway, hope he's thankful. <laughs> and we're gonna let this little guy go back on the branch we found him. Looking a lot better now, actually. Now it looks just totally normal. All right. Let me, uh, I can take over again. All right, climb back up, sir. I mean, ma'am. All right. If anyone is a vet or something, tell me what on earth that is. It's like a solid, gelatinous chunk of something. I presume it's not good, though. All right, guys, and the next lifer. Ooh, there we go. Wow, have a look at this. This is Hebeus Igneus, the fireback keelback. Although, this is not a very vibrant example. Normally they'll have like a bright line along here. On this one you can see it, but it's quite faded. So the common name fireback keelback doesn't really apply much in this individual, but you can tell that it's not any of the other Hebeus species from this area because if you look at the ventrals, they are patterned like this and the other one just has light ventrals. Very nice. This is the one that we really wanted to find here. The other Hebeus in the area, we would also love to see, of course, but wasn't that high on our priority list. Have a look at this little thing. These are called keelbacks, although they are not directly related to all the other keelbacks, like your red-necked keelbacks and stuff. Uh, they're in a completely different genus. These ones are totally non-venomous, whereas the rest of the keelbacks are rear fanged as well as poisonous. These are totally harmless. They inhabit uh, streams primarily, sometimes little ponds as well, I would presume, and likely feed on small froglets and fish, stuff like that. Anyway, they are a very sensitive species, which Sometimes even if you just keep them in a snake bag for more than a day, they will die. Very fragile little snakes. You can see there that cute little head of his. Man, we are absolutely cleaning up with lifers on this trip. I think I'm already at like seven or eight lifers this trip, which is absolutely insane. Look at him just trying to hide his little head there. Oh, and he got stuck. <laughs> And there is actually water right down there where I presume he's gonna flee to. I hope you guys can hear me over the sound of the rushing river in the background. All right, guys, I've just found literally the biggest green pit viper I've ever seen in my life. Have a look at the size of this next to my hand. Here, take over for a moment. I'm gonna grab her out. It is gum crack guys, so. She is not happy. Wow! Look at. Look at the size of this. That is without a doubt the biggest green pit viper I've ever seen. And it's, by the looks of things, not a happy one. Wow! Look at the size of that head! How long would you say this is? Like a meter? Yeah, definitely. Ooh. Pretty cool. That is really cool. I'm doing the snake dance where you try to avoid the pointy end. Wow, have a look at the girth of the snake compared to my fingers. I mean, that is a seriously big green viper. Fully zoom. A look at the size of this green viper. Hands down, the biggest green pit viper I've ever seen. But it is getting quite late and we have about a three or four hour walk ahead of us, so I'm just gonna let her go. 
But have a look at the size of this green viper. She is not as calm as most of the other gumps were that we've seen. Although now she's already starting to mellow out quite a lot as you can see. But I wouldn't want to take any chances because with a head that size you can be sure she's got a load of venom as well. That is fantastic. Alright, back she goes. I mean, look at the size of that head next to my finger. That is crazy. What a beauty. All right, Rupert just cruised something very unusual. It is adult Ovophis monticola, what we were really hoping to see as well as the juvenile. And the most unusual thing about this, it's on the road in the daytime. There's a car coming. And there's a car coming, but not on our lane, so we should be okay. Just gonna wait for this car to pass so you can hear me. All right, little guy was just working his way across the road during the daytime, which is very unusual for vipers in Asia, you know? Maybe only the Russell's viper would be active in the day, as far as I knew, but apparently these guys do have some diurnal activity as well. Uh, we're probably gonna carry him off into the forest there. I can hear a little stream. All right, let's uh, look at him just flattening his body on the areas that I touch. Very slow. I've noticed that like most of the snakes up here are a lot more slow moving. I think just because it's freaking cold. <laughs> yeah. Don't quote me on it, but I also think these are really docile. Yeah, in captivity though they're not at all. Um, but this one does seem to be quite docile anyway. Let's bring him away from the road into some forest. All right, we've just brought him a couple steps away from the road to a nice little leafy bank where he'll probably be much better off, but look at him essing up his neck there a bit. That is a little bit of a defensive pose there, but overall, very friendly snake. Uh, they are presumably hemotoxic, as most Southeast Asian vipers are, uh, but I believe not a whole lot is known about their venom just because they only live in these high elevation areas, so there's probably not too many bite records from these, but I would guess that it's not actually very toxic because from seeing these species in captivity, these are one of the few vipers which will actually bite onto rodents and constrict them, as well as using venom. So if they're constricting their prey, that would indicate that their venom is probably not too bad, although I'm not trying to find out. Look at that beautiful little head though. I love those little white lines underneath their head. It's a very small species of viper, which can get quite a bit bigger than this, but this would already be considered an adult male. Anyway, beautiful little snake, quite similar to the Malayan pit viper in habits, that it just lives in these leafy floors and is very well camouflaged. This is arguably actually a quite common species, but they're very rarely seen by herpers just because of their habits. They live up here in these high elevation mountains, and obviously they are extremely well camouflaged and additionally they virtually never move. These guys will sometimes sit in the same position on the floor for weeks or even a month at a time just waiting for prey to come by. And Rupert and Harry were actually walking a very well trodden trail yesterday and found a tiny hatchling just dead on the path in front of them and presumably someone had just stepped on that during the daytime and didn't even notice. Um, so they're very hard to find unless they're out on the move, which they only really do in and after very heavy rains when they kind of get washed out from wherever they're sitting. And I think that's the case with this one because last night it was actually raining really heavily and a lot of soil and leaf litter got flushed down into the drains. So this guy was probably among that and now is just out during the daytime trying to find new ground. Very nice little snake though. We're gonna let him go. I've already taken a couple photos in between shots. Yeah, and I'm incurring major leeches. Yeah, we're getting bitten by <laughs> leeches. So let's just put this little guy back here among the leaf litter.
You'll also notice how in adults they're way more camouflaged than that juvenile we saw was. The juvenile had really bright colors, but then when they age, they turn a bit more dull like this, and you could really imagine that if this guy is hidden in a whole bunch of leaf litter like this, this is how they'll naturally sit. Oh, tuck your head in, there we go. They'll literally sit hidden away with just their head exposed, and that looks pretty much just like a leaf. And they'll stay like that for a very long time. Anyway, let's get back on the road. Alright guys, we didn't find anything else after that, so this concludes our non-expedition. If you enjoy my content, please don't forget to leave a like and comment down below, and of course, if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe. If you'd like to support me and my channel further, you could always pick up some of my merch or check out my Patreon. Links to that will be down below. Till next time.